Now we're going to look at another way we can define sequences, and this is called recursively. So a recursive formula defines the nth term of a sequence as a function of the previous term. So what this means is you're going to take your answer out and put it into the next one. Okay? So this is telling us, it'll give you your first term. So this is saying that a1 is 3. Then it's saying for any other term, you're going to take the previous term and add 7 to it. So for a2, we would take 3 plus 7, we would get 10. For a3, we're going to put 10 in. We'd do 10 plus 7, which is 17. And for a4, we take 17 plus 7 is 24. So our first four terms of this recursive sequence would be 3, 10, 17, 24. Now, this next one, it says our first term is 1, and it says for the next term you're going to take, so a2, which would be a1 plus 1, so we're going to take x, so notice these two match, so this will be 2, minus our previous one, which is just 1. So our term is actually x squared minus 1. a3, we're going to have x cubed minus our previous term, and we'll put it in parentheses so that we know to distribute. And a, the fourth term would be x to the fourth minus our last term. So here we get x to the fourth minus x cubed plus x squared minus 1. So our first four terms here would be 1, x squared minus 1, x cubed minus x squared plus 1, and x to the fourth minus x cubed plus x squared minus 1. So the terms don't have to be numbers. They could be expressions. Okay, and our third one here, we're saying our first term is 10. So then a2 will take 5 plus 1 over 10, which would give us 5.1. a3, we would take 5 plus 1 over 5.1, um, which if we turn into a fraction, it's pretty crazy decimal, is 265 over 51. 5.1 as a fraction is 51 over 10. And then a4 would be 5 plus 1 over 265 over 51. which as a fraction would be 1376 over 265. So the important thing to remember with a recursion formula is that you're taking that last value you got out and plugging it into the formula to get the next term.